Um, I'm, I'm picking up with a specific prophet of the digital age, um, Philip Hefner. Philip Hefner is a Lutheran theologian. Uh, no metaphor has been more important for the theology of technology than Philip Hefner's created co-creator. It is a polarizing one. Many people love it or hate it. And usually when they hate it, they hate it for uh, the, along the lines that Florian was talking about of uh, claiming to advocate for the for the poor, but not actually doing so effectively. Um, but with such a polarizing metaphor, it brings a lot of misunderstanding. So a quick word of clarification on what created co-creators actually is. What makes humanity unique, Hefner claims, and what makes humans who they are is that we are created by God to join his work and create with God as his created co-creators. The metaphor can be used to refer to several distinct theological claims, but primarily the main one is this one here, that creating is not an add-on for us. It is not one attribute among others that mark human life. More than what we do, creating is who we are. So Hefner says that humans are characteristically creators as God is characteristically the creator. So this claim and others wrapped up along with it support the conclusion that it is humanity's good nature to create. Hefner says the fact that we are creators is not our sin. Our sin emerges from the fact that we too often are incapable, that we, that we too often are incapable of directing our imagining and creating in ways that are commensurate with our grounding in the creation and in God's image. So the problem is an epistemological one of how we wrestle with our knowledge of good and evil, not so much with who we are and who we are is creators. These quotes are pulled from uh, not Hefner's original work, uh, The Human Factor, they are pulled from his latest publication. It is a uh, Sveshkrift published last year in 2022 called Human Becoming in an Age of Science, Technology, and Faith. In this book, Hefner offers five new chapters and it's paired with responses from the theologians, ethicists, other scholars to whom his metaphor has proved important across a range of different uh, conversations and disciplines. And I wanna look at the latest development of creative co-creators in this book to try to put a finger on what works about this metaphor and what doesn't, why is it still so polarizing? In this paper, I'll turn, I'll turn to this book to ask how can our continued development of the metaphor best serve uh, prophetic work in our digital age? And I'll argue that the metaphor requires a more holistic engagement of its ethical, scriptural, and traditional context to be of more substantial help to a digital age. And these engagements are best pursued through the collaboration of, again, as the metaphor calls for, uh, co-creators together. And to make these arguments, I'm going to demonstrate how Hefner creates a theological myth of created co-creators through a method of demythologization. So it is a kind of postmodern project working with a modern method. And I think that helps to put a finger on why this kind of contradictory approach can no longer support a meaningful prophetic footing in the mire that we have in the digital age of modern dualisms and postmodern pluralisms. But I think if we follow a few suggestions for development paths, which I'll conclude with, then created co-creators can continue to be a prophetic and helpful voice in our, in our digital information age. So let's get into it. Some of the strengths of created co-creators, what makes this particularly strong, particularly attractive, or at least to get a lot of attention. It's very relevant for our digital age in several ways. So first in human becoming, Hefner is particularly clear about his understanding of created co-creator as an aspect of theological myth. He explains in the very beginning in the preface, I emphasize here my intention to propose the created co-creator as personal narrative and as metaphor and symbol. So with, it, with this description, which he develops um, in, in the following chapters, one chapter specifically is completely devoted to just defending this identity of the metaphor as a metaphor and myth. But with this, Hefner's embracing postmodern epistemologies. 
that understanding of the persisting role of interpretive paradigms in human rationality. And I use the word paradigm as an intentional reference to, to Kuhn's work, demonstrating in the 60s that even scientifically established facts depend on paradigms of theological interpretation rather than pure reason to assert facts. So Hefner understands his metaphor in human becoming in this same kind of vein. A second strength, Hefner wants the metaphor to operate equally at home in the Christian theological and secular scientific context for the purpose of fruitfully integrating these rich worlds of meanings. So Hefner is working with a specific eye toward the public and how this will be received to inspire conversation and meaningful dialogue among Christian and other communities. And it's to this end that Hefner selects the term creator because creating works on a secular level without a whole lot of work. It, it does not depend on theological traditions for its broad, understandable definition. Unlike as the editor of the Sveshgrift suggests, uh, Jason P. Robert, he suggests terms like redeemed co-redeemers, sustained co-sustainers. Any of these would be equally, equally valid as created co-creators, he says. But Hefner goes with creation because everyone creates, it is a common grace. And theological traditions may add depth, direction, and nuance to the term, but the state of being created and the act of creating is one that all share, or, or so Hefner claims. And finally, the idea of created co-creators resonates with the ethos and the economy of what sociologists call our information age. We don't have time to get into this here, but just to say, as a descriptor, created co-creators puts a finger on the task of human beings today to create knowledge and technologies that serve the common good. Because the production, the flow, and the consumption of information, uh, the, which is informationalism is the spirit of our age, some sociolog uh, sociologists argue. But that, uh, that flow of information is predicated on created co-creation. Information we know is not discovered so much as it is co-created. And so the knowledge is created in our information age I'm thinking of anthropological theories of the entangled nature of evolution as irreducibly social and biological processes. All of these together um, as humans co-create our own progress and travel through time. And further, our society celebrates content creation, a self-creation, community creation, all the things that we've been talking about already this morning. These are forms of innovative and yet authentic expression. So think of uh, Charles Taylor's Age of Authenticity, this kind of authentic, created, but co-created expression. So in these ways, Hefner develops created co-creators as a theological myth that is very relevant, or at least has an eye toward the postmodern age shaped by digital technologies. But the modern method of demythologization, which he uses to create the myth, undermines its utility. What do I mean by demythologization? The sciences and the humanities have been embattled in competition over which group works with the most truthful myths since you could say the mid 1800s, since sensational campaigns uh, to legitimize the new term of scientist. You can back up a little further, uh, Hume's fork, separating fact and value, forcing theologians to make a choice between working with the standards of the new sciences and, propose, and propositional verifiability, or working according to the undeniability of ineffable personal knowledge. So this is a split that will mark theology and it continues. Uh, it culminates in Rudolf Boltmann's project of demythologization in the 1950s. So Boltmann explicitly works to separate the objective truths of the Bible's historical claims from its theologies, which are the subjective lenses of its authors. So in this way, Boltman proposes to protect theology from being disproved. And those are broad strokes, but for the sake of time, that's what I mean and have in mind when I talk about a demythologization, that separation of a fact and value of history and theology. The field of science and religion to which Hefner belongs, Hefner was the director of the Zygon Center for Science and Religion uh, from 1988 to 2003. 
And he was the former editor in chief of Zygon uh, Journal of Religion and Science. This field coalesced around Ian Barber's 1966 work, Issues in Science and Religion, when Boltman's demythologization was influential as it is still. And in the first wave of science and religion, this process often began with a biblical or theological matter, selecting one as the subject of investigation. And then you turn to the historical and scientific methods to investigate the veracity of the claim. And once done, the scholar would have a kind of proof for the biblical content or clarification of it, using the sciences to investigate the truth of the text and then adding theology back on top once the facts are established. And from a public theology standpoint, this method is seen as useful in finding common ground where Christians and members of the public can meet and reason together. Hefner's development of created co-creator is an example of using that kind of modern method of demythologization. Uh, the co-editor of this, of this work, Human Becoming, uh, Jason P. Roberts again, he agrees, he perceptively states in the leading response chapter, at bottom, created co-creator is a scientifically informed demythologization of Imago Dei, which is intended to color the remythologization of this and all related symbols in the Christian faith tradition. And I think he's exactly right on that. Hefner selects the Imago Dei as his topic of study. He gets to the fact of the matter, creation, and then he adds his vision of public theology back on top of it. Thanks in large part to Hefner's work, the Imago Dei is one of the most popularly engaged theological concepts in, in theological conversations of technology. But the problem is, um, this is a quote from Janine Thwatt, who is uh, very influential in conversations of um, human enhancement, which is, which is the conversation that I, I work with and come from. She concludes after developing her own use of the Imago Dei, that in many ways, the concept functions as a placeholder, the image of God becoming whatever it needs to be in order to articulate the theological affirmation of human uniqueness and moral worth. So the Imago Dei is very vaguely defined if it is really defined at all in the biblical text. And Hefner welcomes this openness to choose a secularly friendly idea of creation in order to build his public theological myth upon the facts of science. He says, if we are what our scientific knowledge explains to us, our theology in turn asserts that God has created us this way. So even in this kind of phrasing, you can see this approach is the same as Boltman's demythologization. You, you find the facts, you fill them with meaning. So despite Hefner's affirmation of interpretive myths guiding the creation of knowledge in a, in a Kuhnian paradigmatic kind of way, his approach here actually is more modern and it tends to approach facts and values as separate, that facts belong to the purview of the sciences and values belong to theology, the facts of sciences preceding and perhaps even determining the latter. Again, he says, our religious traditions propose what our scientific explanations are methodologically incapable of providing, interpretations of the meaning and purpose of our creating. And I don't mean to say that Hefner is wrong, that scientific methods are, are incapable of providing meaning. You know, I, they can't on their own. But to divide the task of information creation between science to discern fact and theology to discern meaning is a, is a modern paradigm of knowledge, or at least a way of talking rather than postmodern. And this kind of approach breaks down in digital context. We've seen it through the climate crisis, through the COVID-19 pandemic, Scientific methods cannot deliver facts free of interpretive frames convincingly to the public anymore, which is what Kuhn started talking about. Scientific methods don't operate with the same authority over fact as they once did when Hefner first started developing this metaphor of created co-creator. And so to defend the place of religion as providing meaning, as he still does in this latest publication um, put out last year, it, it doesn't resonate with the deep experience of relativism of our information age. So by demythologizing nature, Hefner leaves us with too little means of navigating postmodern relativism. Uh, 
another quote to really press this point. He says, I've suggested that the fundamental norm is the wholesomeness of the creation of which we are part, knowing full well that this norm is empty until it is filled with content. And it is we, the co-creators, who must supply that content. This is what I mean by saying that we are co-creators all the way down. And this is what a lot of uh, Hefner's detractors mean when they say, when they criticize him of focusing too much on the co-creators and not supplying enough of the createdness. Yeah. Uh, it matters now more than ever as digital uh, technologies, the capture of big data, the increasingly obvious creation of knowledge popularly challenges the possibility of shared truths to which humanity is accountable as we work together. These epistemological challenges make it difficult for persons to navigate truth claims and to find common ground on which to stand in inter intercontextual dialogue. It becomes a lot easier to just find the communities that agree with you and uh, roll with them and stay there. So, in light of this loss of the public, public modern assumptions of the authority of science and the existence of shared facts, shared reality, how might theologians continue the development of creative co-creator as a public myth for the ways in which it does helpfully speak to our postmodern ethos and economy of, of authentic co-creation? I start with the ideas of a public theologian, Dean Forster. He advises a public theology should be biblical, multilingual, interdisciplinary, politically relevant, prophetic, and intercontextual. So toward fulfilling those criteria, I, I have a few specific suggestions of how we may continue to work with creative co-creator. First, it should engage more deeply and more holistically with biblical scholarship. Movements like theological interpretation, uh, led by scholars like Joel Green, Stephen Fowle, are taking significant strides to build a body of scholarship that reframes modern tools of historical criticism in postmodern paradigms to make this kind of engagement possible. If Hefner's metaphor continues to be developed as informed by biblical narratives on a more holistic scale, it will not depend so foundationally on the thin symbol of the Imago Dei to define the entire anthropological character of humanity. It'll be more robust and better able to speak to the complexities of human life together if it works with the canon of, of Christian scripture. And the same is true for the continued development with theological tradition. For example, there was a standout chapter of Human Becoming, one of the responses from ethicist Gregory R. Peterson. He sketches the relevance of creative co-creators uh, for institutions by developing the persisting necessity of virtue ethics. Virtue ethics is something that Hefner softly criticizes and he sets aside, um, but Peterson is able to draw out how this is essential still for the social level of human creativity and not just the individual level. Returning to Roberts, he summarizes the need for engagement neatly. He says the biblical witness and Christian theological tradition depict God as much more than just the creator of all that is. It stands to reason therefore that a creature held to bear the image and likeness of God is also more than just a created co-creator. So continued theological development will likely lead to a more pluralistic take, another suggestion I have on the essence of humanity. Hefner too reductionistically insists that creation is not just one aspect of human nature, but the defining role, not what we do, but who we are, taking after God's role of creator. But was God not the I am before he was creator? So why, why should creator get this exclusive place of privilege in defining God's image? Again, Hefner's not wrong. It's a very helpful and, and I think necessary um, facet of anthropology to draw out. But a postmodern theological myth will be expansive enough to include several interpretations that are truer than others, to borrow one of Hefner's terms, without breaking down into in a fair bend kind of way that anything goes. One last critique, uh, permitting creative co-creator to stand alongside other anthropological myths will ease Hefner's tendency to use the word creation as a catch-all. He needs it to do a lot of work. So as I mentioned, one of the main critiques against creative co-creator is that it ignores the working class or, or impoverished people who do not have the freedom to create in these kinds of ways that creation evokes when we think about technology. But Hefner says that this is a problem of the limited imagination of the upper classes. He redefines creativity 
to include all kinds of labor and human behavior, which he may be right, that may be fair. But if you are able to allow creative co-creator to stand alongside other anthropological myths, like as Robert suggests, um, redeemed co-redeemers, sustained co-sustainers, it eases the pressure for a creator to be all encompassing and its development is free to proceed in more specific and robust ways to assist ethical reasoning on endeavors that the publicly understands more properly as creative. So these suggestions are all very demanding. How could any of us meet all these criteria? So therefore my last suggestion and my conclusion is to agree with the observation of um, so many scholars working in digital theology that collaboration is a more fruitful path forward for the development of public theological myths. Creative theological work should not sacrifice the depth and rigor of scholarship in order to meet the breadth of information to, to which we're now accountable in our digital context. Forming postmodern public theological myths requires rigorous postmodern accounts of shared realities of createdness. Hefner articulates his metaphor of created co-creator in postmodern terms, affirming myth and the creative aspects of knowledge. His goal, as he articulates in his Feshgrift, is to offer a wholesome anthropocentricity around which the public may create in communion with one another and with God. As a prophet of the digital, Hefner speaks directly to the creative ethos of the information age. However, he works with modern assumptions and methods regarding the relationship between fact and value which lead him to create an arguably empty myth as the assumptions disappear in the public. By demythologizing a myth in the way that Hefner does, it leaves the metaphor empty for both Christians and the wider public. Fruitful public theological myths should not be pursued in a, in a thin, most common denominator. They require postmodern reframing of modern tools in order to demonstrate that several things go, but not anything goes. And so to borrow Hefner's language, public myths should be created with co-creators in order to substantiate its claims. Theologians must create public myths responsible to the created aspects of meaning in order to support ethical creativity. And if the demands of the information age and its vast expanse are too strong, then we must get better at working together, which I think is itself a fulfillment of the communion-filled kind of co-creation that Hefner proposes. Thank you. <laughs>